whether you don't read a paper and just spend all your time on your computer or on your iPhone, the information is there and please seek it out and ask mm -hmm. questions. And all the secondary school building committee meetings are posted and they're public and anybody can come and some people do. But uh, as the superintendent suggested, we're meeting tomorrow at 6.30. You're welcome to come to the meeting and uh, get first-hand information as to what's going on and, and the progress that we're making on the project. I'd also say that uh, I think the question of the week that's been in the transcript every week has been they've done an excellent job on that, the Secondary School Building Committee. It's very informative. So, uh, any, any other comments or questions? I think it's, just, it's only five weeks away. We'll be, we'll be voting five weeks from tonight at a special town meeting. Right. And five and almost a little less than six weeks, we'll be voting at a special a election. election. Yeah. So we, again, and I can't stress enough, Jeff and Mel brought it up. Of we want to get the information out. We want people to have the information. If people, you know, decide for whatever reason they don't want to vote for this, it's one thing. But we don't want to hear from people they don't have the information because it's there. It's available. Okay. Jerry, there was one piece of misinformation that I heard from a constituent that I just wanted to clarify and I think it's important for people to hear that uh, this, this particular issue came up um, in relation to what the project actually is. We've had a number of forums about what the potential building of the facility will look like. The issue that's come up is that we're building some enormous palatial core office for central admin. Um, I would like to just personally say that we're not doing that. Um, it's really not part of the project in, in the way that's being described. I don't know if anybody else on the committee has heard this from a constituent, but I've heard it more than once. And so I, I just wanted to bring it up as something we could perhaps get clarification from Jeff and also our members. Yeah, obviously the, um, the administrative offices, as they are now, are going to be part of the campus. Right now they're located in the middle school. And um, they're ba actually, they're still going to be located in the middle school after yep. we're through. So the square footage of the uh, administrative office is not going to be much, much different than what we have now. Okay. It will accommodate our needs, the staffing that we have. Uh, again, like everything else with this project, we work in very close collaboration with the Secondary School Building Committee. We're limited as to what we can do. And I would say that the facility that we're contemplating um, is, is no more uh, elaborate than we have essentially right now. Mm -hmm. um, the, the issue at one point was whether or not we would include the administrative offices on the campus or if we uh, were, were going to try to locate them someplace else in another town building or even lease space. And in the long run, we determined that this was the most efficient, most effective way to, to do it was to keep them in, within the campus. Either way, we're not going to get reimbursement for that particular phase of the project. So if we uh, kept them here, if we moved them someplace else, we weren't going to get reimbursement. We knew that going in. That's one of several things that, that are non-reimbursable expenses that are, but are included in the overall cost of the project. Right, right now, the, um, the number of the administrative offices are scattered around in what will become classroom space. So we're consolidating those uh, into a central district office location mm -hmm. rather than having them scattered all over the school building. Right. Okay. So, Karen, thanks that for bringing helps. that up. But Thank again, you. that's, it's, believe me, it's going to be nothing much more than what we have right now. For, Jerry, for just to be clear, the, those administrative offices, the district administrative office will be, will be located where the current large group room is. So they're basically going to take that space and make it into the district offices. And the option, as Jerry said, is we have to have a place for the district offices. So if it's not on campus, we either have to buy a building or we have to find appropriate space to rent. And the rent's going to be every month forever if we have to rent space versus having permanent space here. And, and I think all of us felt that, or I most of us at least felt that it makes much more sense to have the administrative offices on, on, on a campus. Yeah. And just as important, I think the superintendent and the administrative team wanted the, uh, the administrative offices on, on the campus as well. So. Did you remove the hot tub out of that building? <laughs> yeah. <we> <laughs> <laughs> the what? The hot tub. The hot tub. The hot tub. Out of the built administrative office. office. Um, we're we're, rec we're renaming it jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where it comes from. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this You're is how rules get started. <laughs> M MSBA won't won't allow us to have <laughs> either. No hot tub, no swimming pool. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have a policy revision. It's a first reading of policy JGK. This is head injury concussion. There's been a lot of discussion about this. I think recently we actually approved a temporary. Uh, policy. I think uh, Mike and Cliff have both been working on this policy. Um, the basis for which came out, I think, from the um, uh, 
where did it come from, MASC. MASC. So, Cliff or Mike, I'm going to ask you, one, uh, one of you or both of you to actually summarize what's in this policy, and then we can uh, have a first reading and a vote. The basic policy is very similar to what we have already um, in the in the system. What we have made substantial changes to um, through various groups, including the athletic subcommittee and and various um, individuals throughout the system is to uh, modify the, the regulations that go along with the policy so that they are uh, consistent with what we do and, and the names that we use and so forth within our system. And so that the, uh, the cu concussion policy regulations that go along with the policy are, are now um, consistent with what we've been told we should have in a final policy, and they're consistent with what we do here in North Reading. And again, the, the, the regulations are uh, pursuant to the policy. The regulations are fairly lengthy. I believe they're nine pages long, um, but they're obviously very detailed. Um, Mike, did you want to add anything on that? I mean, it doesn't just cover sports. It does cover band and Good point. all mm -hmm. extracurricular activities. activities. Well, actually, I, I read through it, and I did not see it cover any extracurricular activities other than band, and that's the problem I have with this policy. It's like other people can get concussions if you're not playing sports and in a band. They're not covered. I, I, don't, I just don't understand it. Well, it's it deemed to be extracurricular athletic activities. Go ahead, uh, Kathy. Did you I would some? just like to say that this regulation or this law comes to us from the Department of Public Health, and it requires school districts to establish a head injury concussion policy specific to athletic activities. But we have this policy in place, and we need to have it in place for middle school and high school. That's the law. So we complied with the law using the MASC uh, prototype that they published for um, us to use as a guideline, and it was quite extensive recognizing that we're complying with the law if in fact there's a head injury or a concussion that occurs in the lower grades we now have a guideline or a protocol to follow whereas in the past we didn't have this much detail but by law we are required to have it for our middle school and high school and that's why you see it specifically written in this way but but it doesn't cover for example I would think that the um, for example Allison Kane should be required to take this training. She's the head of the maskers. They have shows where there are things sometimes that kids could get hurt. They're working with, with heavy equipment at times. They're building sets. Mm -hmm. And under this, she's not required to take the training. That's correct. But if we as a district want to make it more inclusive, we have the right to do that. At the bottom of JGK, you'll see um, the listing of the required sports and extracurricular right. activities that must fall under this this law or these guidelines. But it doesn't mean that it's to the exclusion of others. If we think that we need to have our performing arts director as part of this, we can make that determination. It says not limited to in that also. If you look at line... Uh, Which page are you on, Mike? I'm on page one yep. of the policy. Yep. And it says, but not limited to the following sports. At the bottom. So the at the um, bottom where it says one, the little one there. The site. Yeah. So if you're looking at page one of the policy. Yeah, I see. Yep. Right. And if you look at uh, line three, right before that line three, the end of line two says, but not limited to the following activities. Yeah. Um, I see what Mel's saying. And I think we could go ahead and, and improve this for first reading, but I think some thought might want to go into it to make it more expansive rather than say that we have the right to do it, maybe to incorporate it in here. It does It does specifically say in the footnote that uh, it includes marching band, et cetera, but um, most of the rest of it refers specifically to sports. Uh, sports. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe we ought to give some thought to that uh, to make I think the policy we had was more inclusive as far as in, wasn't it including in uh, other no. activities? No. no? no. Okay. No. One no. Of the we talked about it. But one of the first changes we, yeah. we did is we changed the, the title from athletic con concussion policy to head injury yeah. concussion okay. policy. Yeah. But I don't think the body Just of it necessarily reflects, you know, the change. Uh, whether you get your head injured in on the football field or in uh, the, the 
theater really doesn't make much difference if it's concussion does it no i understand i i just think that it's it's specific to sports and my recommendation would be that we approve it on first reading and then just give it some thought maybe um i i think i need to make a point here about about this the reason this came through uh, the athletic sort of policy chain is that it's, it's about the repetition in, in athletics sort of competition <coughs> kids are exposed to or the higher degree or likelihood of having an injury so the, the reason we have this policy is to address which is addressed here and one of the paragraphs we'll read again about sort of secondary injury which creates sort of second impact syndrome which is devastating um, I think what this the, the whole public health impact they're trying to make here is that the kids will you know if they get a concussion we treat it appropriately we deal with it before it becomes something majorly horrible which we don't want no, none of us want to see that the likelihood of sustaining that type of injury in band or any other extra correct extracurricular activity is is much much lower so this is this is a comment on the types of activities and the, the types of activities kids will be doing that will promote their ability to, to get hurt. That, so that's a good point. I, I think what you're saying is a li much more likelihood of repetitive type of injury right. with the athletic part of this than somebody having an accident. Right, and there's also a cultural issue here too because kids who are in sports tend to have a certain attitude and, and lightly so there's a sort of athletic sort of issue around you know kids playing in teams and sports and you know what what's an injury, what isn't an injury. This is trying to make this important and make people more aware of it in this sort of sports world. I don't see this as be, I mean, I, I was in band in high school. I understand, you know, marching band has issues. You know, if somebody with a tuba falls down out of a, you know, stands or whatever, there's There's nothing worse than a tuba injury. It's terrible. <laughs> nothing. It's terrible and, you know, it's very devastating to a community, so. She had caught in a tuba. <laughs> point made. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying. I think that's a good, you made a good point. Uh, anything else, Mel? Do you want to? Yes, I, I, heard I have another issue, and yeah. I, I didn't. I'm not sure if this was in our policy previous, and that is that it talks about everybody who has to take one of the head injury safety training programs approved by the Mass Department of Public Health, and parents are on here, and I don't re remember that being a case in the past, and that's a big change. That's correct. And I, I'm just, I'm going to be interested in seeing how many parents we get to cooperate and take this course. Because I, I guess I really have a problem with that, to be honest with you, to say we have to force parents to take the concussion course. I think, I think that's wrong. But I, I really prefer yeah. that not to the be The law is pushing it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the attitude is that the, the, the parents are going to be the ones that first recognize in many cases. Um, the the effects or a fallout of a concussion. I just have a real negative reaction to government intrusion that goes that far. That's all. All right, we have a policy. We have the regulations. I'm not going to read the entire policy for the record unless somebody wants to, but the, the policy is in print. It's JGK. Um, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve uh, for first reading the policy and the regulations, and then we'll open it up for any further discussion, okay? I'll so much. All right, okay. we have a motion by Karen and a second by Cliff to approve JGK for first reading. Is there any further discussion? Anybody else want to comment on it? Cliff, Mike, okay. Uh, um, if we added in here in this uh, footnote at the bottom of page one, mm -hmm. uh, director of theater activities or well, something like that, would that satisfy I, I think if we're going to do something like that, we probably need to put a little more thought into see if it would incorporate anything else or anyone else. Uh, so yeah. I'm not going to support it anyway because of that parent stuff. Okay. So. All right. And I'm not either. So. <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. Any, any further discussion? Yeah, I think if there's going to be a problem with the parent uh, issue, it, that's something that's going to cause us a great, great deal of grief. Uh, with the regulatory agencies. Is that right? And that's required by law. Because Someone has to explain to me how you can force a parent. That, that's ridiculous. It's no. ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can force you to buy health insurance. 